Oh, welcome to the Mad Laboratory here. This is, uh, for those of you who don't know, this is my main shop with all its kludginess. Um, and it's pretty crowded, so there's enough room for, you know, me, my test equipment, and one thing on the bench, and a few curse words. Usually what happens, to be really honest with uh, with you folks, is a lot of my repairs are so kind of minimalistic, I really don't need all this stuff. You know, I probably could get rid of a lot of it. Um, things just don't need all this heavy-duty equipment. And uh, I found over the years that uh, better is the enemy of good, and the less junk you get involved, the probably the better off you are. Anyway, this is the gas, uh, the sun, or the... Uh, Son of Amzilla gas. Gas is a great American sound for those of you who don't know. This is about an 80 watt sided amp and you probably saw the first video where it was not a happy camper. And a lot has happened. Um, I finally kind of gave up and drug this downstairs and got my scope out and was looking at it with the scope. And uh, it's uh, very weird. This has been very problematic, and this has been problematic because it had an intermittent. And troubleshooting intermittents are can be very frustrating, and uh, they can be very frustrating if they creep out of their box and get, make it back to the customer. You know, customer takes you something to fix, you fix it, you say it's fixed, you take it back to them. It runs a while, or they get it back and it's broke, and then it comes back, and they're not happy, and then you look like a, a goof, and you're not happy, and I try really hard to, uh, actually I try really hard to avoid inter intermittent problems just in the first place. They can be very frustrating to troubleshoot. This one's been no exception. This has been a long painful road and this is just a, a mere snippet of the uh, time I've invested in this. Um, there there comes a time where you kind of wonder whether you're making any ground and and sometimes uh, actually these are uh, these kind of problems are dogs we call them dogs and you just you know you're not going to make any money at it and you if you're in it for and if you're in it for a business um then you're really screwed you know what do you do it can be a very big issue you know and i've actually made some progress on this um it's been a long climb up to Mount Everest here. It's not that nothing, you know, I got all the way up there and all there was was an amp. There were no speakers and nothing to listen to. I was really grumpy about it. Anyway, it was a bad joke. Um, what the deal is in a nutshell is, I told you originally that this side was kind of clipping or sounded distorted. And it also mentioned that when you turn it on, it would run a while, like a two or three seconds, and then get distorted. Um... On further examination on this, I discovered, this is one of the reasons some of my readings have been thrown off. Um, I, on the back, right, you know, there's the top one and then this bottom binding post. That was all loose. It was all rattling around in there loose and I'd been using it as a ground point. That was, that was not a smart move. I uh, got to looking under there and found that all loose, that the nut was loose. It's just a big darn mess, that really. And I thought, well, okay, here's what the problem is. So I screwed that all back together, and that didn't fix the problem. Then, in the middle of all this, this thing started running. And the bad thing was, I had this heat sink off, and I only had two output transistors in there. Luckily, I used my, I was using my nose, and when the thing kicked in, those transistors got pretty warm. Uh, sizzly, sizzly to the touch warm, but I, I smelled them and immediately my instinct kicked in and I shut the power down and let the thing cool down. They kind of took off and part of the problem was I'd been jacking with the bias control a little bit, trying to see what would happen. That's this control here and I had the bias set up a little high. So I did a few on and off tests with the thing real quick and got the bias adjusted back down. And even with the bias um, set up right, I couldn't run the thing without the heat sink. You can see the, the thing kind of running away. And I showed you that little integrated circuit package. That's a transistor array package, what that really is. And it's up against this heat sink, and it's down. 
you can't even see it it's about yeah right about here rolling straight down and thermally you know the heat from the transistors are transferred into the heat sink which is transferred into that array that's how the the thermal path and shuts the thing down so I got the thing working and I had to go get a can of uh, heat sink compound and I got it all bolted back together and got all the caps back on. Like I said, this thing's kind of fiddly a little bit, um, but I'm getting used to it. And I got it up and running, and when I fired it back up, it was making a little bit of a cracking sound. But it went away, and secretly in the back of my mind, I thought to myself, Yeah, you didn't fix that, you dumb, dumb bunny. This will be back. And up front, I patted myself on the back. And, uh, you know, try to, uh, what do I want to say? I don't know. Tried to convince myself that I had fixed this. Yeah, I bought that. Uh, cheap rationalization. Try and go a week without our cheap rationalization. Anyway, so I'd been turning it on and off, and I kept hearing this crack, and it was at very low levels. If I ran the volume at any decent level, even remotely, you could never hear this. But if I shut everything down, you could hear it, and it would come and go, and it would vary with the, having this input even plugged in like it was terminated. And I thought, ah, uh, well. So today, I put the thing on, I put the thing all together, right out all together, but I had the heat sink back on, and doped all those up. That was a dumb move. Although, I did replace a number of caps. Um, basically, all these caps have been replaced. I, I unsoldered them all. There's a few weird things in there. I'm getting the feel of the thing now, and I feel more confident about it. So I bolted it all back together, and I basically left it like this. And I've been monitoring the current through the emitters to adjust the bias. And I let the thing run at a low level and just wasn't one of my better thoughts but I just left the I left the thing run and basically walked off I drove I took off and went to one of the crummy tool stores and got some tools I came back and did some laundry and I went downstairs and uh, the thing was quiet again and I could hear it clipping it was running halfway and I could feel that this side this is this is the positive side of the outputs this is the negative it was right back at its old games now, the last time when I got this working, I had been fiddling with these. I'm going to show you on this side because it's easier. I've been fiddling with these four transistors. Yes, there's one missing because it happens to be over here. So this time, my on and off tricks weren't working. And I shot some cool mist in there thinking maybe this was something thermal. I really tinkered with this, this bunch of transistors and these sockets. Like I said before, that's an IC socket. It's a kind of an old Tektronics trick. And it, nothing. So I thought, okay, well, I'll test it. And I've got a little, one of my favorite little toys. If you ever get a chance to get a hold of these. This is a BK510 uh, transistor checker. I've had this thing a long time. It's been an old and faithful friend, and it's been extremely reliable. It's only relied to me one time about a transistor, and it was an RF power transistor. And I had fiddled with this upper transistor over here. So I took it out and put it, plugged it in there and nothing. It was dead as a doornail. And I was looking at that thinking, but I tested this transistor. Uh, why is it now broken? And while I was testing it, I had the three leads there and I squeezed it. And it started working. Basically when this thing, um, when it starts working, it lights up, tells you what polarity is. And there's a little chirp. And I thought, you got to be kidding me. This is some mechanical problem. And I spread the leads out again, and I've got that transistor here somewhere. Sorry, this is all freehand and kind of jiggly and very tilty. Uh, these are some caps I've been replacing here. There it is. Maybe a little troublemaker. There's the culprit. I sealed it in tape so it can't get away from me and uh, contaminate anything else. Anyway, I spread the leads and squeezed the leads. I did it a couple times, and it would work, and it wouldn't work. And I thought, you got to be kidding me. This is some mechanical intermittent. And now I, I fiddled with it enough where it's dead. It's just dead. So I stole the transistor out of here and plugged it in over here, and I've been letting it run, and the thing doesn't clip and pop and make little weird noises. It's very frustrating. One thing I've been concerned about 
since I'm a little unfamiliar with it. Some amps you can do this stuff to and some you can't. You gotta be a little careful. Uh, I wanted to disable this side while this, this transistor was out, even though it appears if it's bad, it doesn't hurt the thing. I wanted to shut the thing down. Well, I discovered that the wiring in here, the red is the positive. There's a red heavy wire and a red skinny wire, and they hook down on this circuit board. And it's actually labeled down in there if you look real carefully. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. And then on the minus side, if I get this transistor off my darn hand, there's a gray. So basically, I, instead of trying to jack with these fuses like I did last time and got outsmarted, I just disconnected all of it and took that side out of the equation, which is great. The wiring in here is a little bit messy. I'm not really pleased with it. Something else I discovered too is this you know has some nice uh, dial lights for the VU meters. Now guess what? If one bulb goes out, they all go out. That's kind of stupid. So they've got dial lights and an LED, which is going on the faceplate. There's a few fiddly things, and one thing, this, I should have looked at this closer. I just discovered this a while ago. These two boards actually separate. This board here can separate from that bottom board down there. I think I may have showed you that. I don't know if I had this apart or not. Anyway, you can take, after you get this out, you can take these two screws, this screw here and this screw here loose, and this top board will, will come off, and that way you don't have to undo all these damn transistors and all that heat sink compound and all that dope, and it only took a few times, and again, I'm admitting a mistake here, but hey, this is the way it is, you know. Normally my things go pretty well, and there's a few surprises. This one is, eh, it's not that it's gone poorly, it's just not gone swimmingly. And like I said, I'm sure there are people that are familiar with this that are, are chuckling away. Well, you know. So now i got to find one of those transistors. That might be interesting. You can see it missing there. It's right there. I kind of looked around. And uh, amazingly enough, just for fun, I dug out an old friend. This, is a, this was a kit I built years ago. It was a dumb kit. It... Uh, it's a heat kit transistor checker, and it's very intense and requires you know a lot of things. Unlike this, where literally you, all you do is hook those leads up and you rotate this lever. You just start stepping through there, and when it, when it goes off, then you read that there. Um, you can actually use this thing in circuit. It'll drive the circuit most of the time. There's a bigger version of this thing, too. And, amazingly enough, I've got one. It's the... It's the, uh, the the BK, the 520B, there's a meter and it does some leakages and, you know, it has the highlight, it has, it'll identify the thing. Um, I need to freshen this baby up. This is a really a clever device. If you ever get a chance to get a hold of one of those, they're well worth the money. I think I paid, I don't know, I think with shipping and everything, I think I've laid out a hundred bucks. I've got another one of those, but it's gotten so old and so tired. It needs to be gone through. And actually, these things are digital and this uses, uh, couple A batteries. This uses a C battery and this thing is really not that great. Although it does have one redeeming little quality. It does show you, attempt to show you the beta or the gain of a transistor. You hook it up correctly, you figure out what it is correctly, you set the beta cal um, in the cal position right there. Then you switch to test and it and it shows you that and if it if it doesn't have enough resolution you can multiply it by 10 and actually I used that to test some of those um, little driver tra or those little preamp transistors and determine the beta of there it's about 110 so that might help you in finding a substitute transistor <sighs> and you could probably you know you could probably build one of these there's really very little in there I, I think the majority of it is in the switching or you could probably find one of those on eBay. That's a, a Heath kit, an IT-18. It, it's not a bad unit. It wasn't a good unit at the time when I um, bought it because um, I really needed a transistor checker. I wasn't very confident in checking transistors. Nowadays, cheap voltmeters test transistors. You know, your real your real test is in the circuit. Just know what's going on. You don't need a damn transistor checker. You do it just as a crutch. Well, 
And uh, let's see here. Well, we'll tempt fate there. Don't think that was long enough. Um, I've got a big dummy load up here. You can't see it all. That was another mistake that I'm going to admit to it. This one I'm not happy about. Originally, I was testing this with a little speaker. I've got some little Advent speakers. And somehow this thing, um, one of its times there, it started to show its heels to me and went berserk and swung my output voltage a little hard. And it ate the, I think it ate the speaker. I think it applied some DC voltage to it. That was a bonehead move. Um, I have since got out the dummy load and I made this years ago. It's just some giant power resistors. I think those are like 400 watt. And it's 8 ohm and all this in the middle is switching. It looks like hell. It's on a rack. Just showing it to you here. Sorry, this is all very kludgy and space is a premium down here. And that's something I made years ago. And uh, like I said, I don't do a lot of solid state audio anymore. And everything, you know, you don't do something for 10 years, you kind of just throw it out the window. I used to work on a lot of high power stuff, and this really is, is very similar, but not the same. When things get above, you know, when things get above 500 watts, they start to uh, do a few different things. So, I think that's about everything. And I need to do is reconfigure my bench a little bit if I'm going to do more of these. Yeah, and I need to move some stuff. There's some stuff in here that I'm not going to tinker with. Anyway, I just thought I'd show that to you. And I guess I need to hunt down a transistor. Or I might have to buy some pairs of transistors. The other side of this is... Uh, I think that was a... What was that? An MPS 859 and an MPS 80... Excuse me. An MPS 8599 and an MPS 80 um, 99 they're just a, just a little plastic transistor and I need to look them up see if I can find a decent substitute I tried to cross reference them no cigar they're a little more specialized than that and I still got some parts to replace on this side you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna do this right which you should Everything you replace over here, um, you really ought to replace on both sides of the amp, and you really ought to replace on both channels to make sure that things kind of balance up. And it's potential, there's a potential that whatever blew up over here may be hot on the heels over there. You know, here's a whole army of bad caps and you know, all the loose ones. And I beefed up the voltages on a couple of them. There's some in there that probably don't even need to be in there. I've looked at, there's some modifications you can do to this. I don't know whether they're good or bad. I'm just doing what the customer wants, which is I'm putting it back the way it was. And if he wants me to tinker with it from there, then that's, that's fine. And I'm sure it is possible to take these modules out with all this wiring. You'd have to clip all this loose. All this power stuff would come loose, and the audio output would come loose, and the input. Actually, this isn't that bad. Once I got to looking at it, you need to sit down and look at this stuff real hard. I always do better, and I always forget about this. Um, you know, you think, oh, it's just a 10-minute job, and I'll get away with murder is what you think, at least for me. Um, when things start going poorly, you need to stop, look at the schematic, look, take time and poke around in here. And nowadays with cameras and video, you know, you really can do a great job. You know, I can look in here and kind of document this. You know, here you can see all these connectors. There are a lot of them. About half of them are this transfer. This thing is a real moose. I'll bet that thing weighs 15 pounds. And it has, I think there are th three taps there's kind of a main 40 volt then there's two 50 volt windings apart from the primary and this wasn't set up for overseas it's just a good old i guess the target audience was north america or anybody with 110 
excuse me, 120. Okie dokie. Well, I think I get gabbed long enough. So, we need to find some parts. Do a little more testing. And I might do some work on this power supply board. I, I was looking at the... Uh, looking at the ripple with the scope. This is a... Uh, this is one of my scopes, the uh, 7000 series. Really like these. All these little cool plug in hip modules. And yes, that's a router and a, a freak counter. Okie dokie. Well, I'm going to let this run and I'm going to shut you guys off. Thanks for stopping by. Feel free to leave a comment, even if it's a jab. <laughs> Take it easy.